This is your Places Call. You're listening to Theatrical Thoughts. I'm Emily Wyra. And I'm Jessica Fight. And today we are joined by Patrick Higgins. Patrick yeah. is a member of the cast of the film adaptation of West Side Story. Patrick, thank you so much for coming on today. How are you? Good. How are you guys? Doing really well. It's, it's Monday as we're filming and it very much feels like a Monday, but you know, <laughs> otherwise good. Technical nice. difficulties before we start. It's just, oh, yeah. it's, it's a Monday for sure. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, to start off this Monday episode, as per usual, we'd love to kick our shows off with our 60 Second Life Story segment. You ready, mm. Patrick? Uh, yes, yes. Your whole life in 60 seconds. I'm going to no set my stopwatch uh-huh. and you're going to jump off. Are you ready for this? Yeah, yeah. I'll All try. right. Here we go. Okay. Okay, so I started dancing when I was eight in the studio in Florida. Um, I'm just, I'm just going to go through like my career thing. So um, I started dancing when I was eight in the studio in Florida, and that studio closed down when I was 12. And the guy who taught me how to dance from that studio moved up here. And when I was 13, I did my first musical theater show. So that kind of introduced me to like the acting and singing portions of theater and everything. So it wasn't just dance. It was the other stuff that I learned about, too. Then I came up here. I followed the guy that taught me how to dance. I was just going to train up here for a while. I came up here when I was 15. And that, a couple months later, I auditioned for West Side Story and got that. And um, that happened when I was 16. I'm now 18. And the movie still hasn't come out. And um, what else can I add to this? That was that, That's pretty much my whole career thing. There's like little details here and there, like the secret pilot production, whatever. But um that uh what else can i add uh well right now i'm still just like doing self-tapes and training dancing a ton taking voice lessons over zoom and yeah that was a minute cool <laughs> I, to to time. I had like 20 seconds left i was like damn that was the quickest i've ever done it <laughs> <laughs> i love that yeah it really does incite some really fast talking when you give someone a timer <laughs> I, i've told that story to so many people i've like kind of gotten a so I'm like, okay, I got the eight thing, then I got the 12 thing, then I got the 13 thing. So I'm like, how quick can I do it? And I was like, wow, 20 seconds to spare. That's a record. All right, awesome. I'm glad to know how. Yeah. To now it. you got to just replicate that every single time someone's like, yeah, yeah. so tell me about your life. Now you're like, I've got 40 seconds and I can do it all. <laughs> you know everything. <laughs> You know, dancer first, mad props to you, can't really. <laughs> um, so you got into dance when you're eight. So how did you sort of get into that realm? I mean, was it something like your parents got you into or just something you kind of sought out? Um, oh, I probably could have put that in one minute. That would have been good. But um, um, yeah, that was kind of like, I was just looking for something to do. I'd done like baseball before. I didn't really like it. And um just like trying other sports was like, eh. So my mom has always been very adamant about, I don't want to push him into something. I want him, I want to maybe like guide him in a direction. And if he likes it, I'll ask him. And if he says yes, then I'll let him keep going. So there was a building that the studio was in and it was connected to a gymnasium, like a place for gymnastics. And she was looking at that place for my sister to go do gymnastics but there just happened to be a dance studio connected to it and she was like do you want to like take a class or something maybe and I was like yeah sure why not so I ended up taking a jazz class and uh, um, mom was like do you like it and I was just like yeah that was it <laughs> that's how it started and so I just kept going back and I haven't stopped it's nice oh, that's amazing I love that <laughs> so now you mentioned you followed your dance t-shirt to Jersey how did that happen? <laughs> um, he's in New York. I'm in Jersey. His name is uh, John Vincent Leggio, and you can follow him on Instagram if you want. But um, he's been like my mentor since I was, yeah, since I was like eight, like I said, until now. So I've been dancing with him for a decade. Um, yeah, that was that was like mostly the reason I'm led to believe that we moved up here because my mom has always loved it up here. My dad is from the town that we're living in right now. So it's like it was kind of perfect. And um, he's just like the greatest person, like the best guy. He's not just like my teacher now. He's a friend. I've known him for so long. So it's like he teaches his steps on Broadway in the city. So like every week we go in and dance with him. And it's just like his style of dance is very sharp, very Broadway. He's, he's, he's tough on me as he should be. And it's, I feel like it's made me so much better at what I do. And it's made it so much more fun because I can 
now that I have like a certain level of skill, I can kind of let go and have fun with it. And I, I literally wouldn't have West side. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't have anything if it wasn't for him. So yeah. That just warmed my heart so much. Oh my God. That's amazing. That's incredible. And to be with someone for a decade like that, that's mad props. That's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. So now 16, you book a little film. Nobody has been talking about it at all. No buzz whatsoever. Nobody's ever heard of West Side Story. <laughs> so I would love to know how you auditioned for this and sort of how that whole process culminated to you eventually booking the, um, the film. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So um, yeah, the, I, I hit like cliff notes of this in that one minute section. That's a really great opener. I got to give you guys props for that because that like really opened it up. Um, but I said, uh, we moved up here when I was 15. Um, side note, like at that point, I had been out of his studio, John's studio for like three years. So I was like really eager to get back into it. So that was the point when we moved up here was for me to just get back into training with him because we were up here he was in the city. It's like super easy to get to him. So when I moved up here when I was 15, we, we did it when I was or like in July of 2018 is when we moved. And so the goal was to just go into the city, train with him a ton, eventually hopefully go out for Broadway. It's so close now. Why not? stuff like that. And so, uh, over that, the rest of that summer that I had, I, I was just training, doing stuff with him. And then around like, like in August, I think it was actually my mom that came to me and was like, I found this open call online. Cause we were always on backstage.com looking for stuff. And she's like, I found this audition. Did you see that? And I was like, I don't think so. I haven't checked today. And she's like, okay, it's for West Side. It's a dance open call in the city. Would you maybe want to go to that? And I was like, yeah, sure. Oh my God, I completely forgot. I went to, I went to um like a um it was a vocal audition for the um leads of that movie back in Florida the month before, like in May, like right before we moved up. So I auditioned for it once in Florida and then we moved up here and there was a dance open call and I was like, oh yeah, I'll probably have a better chance at that than the vocal one. So I went to that and it was, that was in Brooklyn at Gelsey Kirkland. It was like 9 a.m. I think right at nine, the line was like around the building. It was like 300 guys or like 200 guys and like 300 girls all there at one day, uh, at once. We're in the back of the line way in and that was my first open call. I'd never gone to an open call before. And that was, that was, it's, it's kind of sad, but the way I remember it is that audition was on September 11th. So that's how I remember what day it was. That very first open call was that day. And so like we'd been here in the, up here in the North for like what, three months at that point. And I'm already at this, my very first open call. I was like, this, this could be worse. <laughs> This is a pretty good start. I like this, but my very first open call had never been anything like it. So kind of nerve wracking, just like a giant room full of people all like singing and like stretching and they're all older than me. I'm like, I don't know what to do. So they gave me my number and they just bring us into this little holding room. We go in, we do the dance and that's it. And it was like a chorus line. I just call your number. And if you're in, then you're in, if you're not, you're out. So they held me. They thought it was good. And I was like, oh my God. Okay. And they were like, we're going to like email you or like call you or let you know by the end of, or like, they didn't give us a time actually. They just said, we're going to let you know if we want to see you again, we'll, we'll contact you. And on the drive home from the train station, I got an email saying, we want you to come back. I was like, okay. So, um, after that, things get a little fuzzy. It was just like, that was the very first open call. And I forget exactly when they wanted me to go back. But after that initial initial open call, it was like five more calls. And it was just like, it, I was seeing some like the same people. So I was getting the same people. They're calling back these guys that I've seen before. So 
I'm kind of like seeing them and it's, it's getting a little less nerve wracking, a little more nerve wracking because they keep calling me back, but also less because I, I see familiar faces, which is nice. And so through that whole process, it was, it was just the dance call at first. And then I go back and they get the jet song to sing. And then you have to work on that and then also dance some more. And then you go back and you're like doing the dance and you're singing, but then they give you sides to do. And so like each time it was just something different. But then as it started to get towards the end of the process, um, like these guys I've been getting to know, they're putting us in a room together side by side to do like a scene or like they're putting us all in one big group just to like look at us as a gang. So they just put me in a big group with all these guys and they're like, okay, sing the jet song, but this time like walk towards us and like, look like you mean it. I'm like, Oh, okay. So they're on that corner of the room. We're in this corner of the room, just walk towards them. Like when you're da, 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 da. <laughs> just stuff like that. They were just messing with us just to see what, like what we could do and that kind of thing. But it, it was, it was really fun. And like for my character specifically, they did an exercise. Like we want them to be in a gang and they're slowly backing, like walking towards you and backing you up. Cause you know, you're like baby John. So just kind of be scared walk backwards, just do your thing, <laughs> just stuff like that. They were just messing with us and I'd never, I'd never done anything like it. So it was scary, but it was like the most fun I'd had in like so long. It was just like really nice to be able to do that. So that really helped with the nerves is just like them messing with us and having fun and really trying to get to know us instead of just like sing a song, leave, you know? Um, but I'm sorry. I'm like rambling about small stuff, but, um, no, we want to hear all this. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, the that last, that very last call that we had. At this point, I like know everybody, not exactly by name, but by face. I'm like, oh, that's that guy. I know him. That's this guy. I did a scene with him. So, um, that very last call that we did, um, Stephen was there in the room. They didn't tell us he was going to be there. Usually, in the email, they say who's going to be in the room. But like Justin Peck, choreographer, this person, casting director, they're going to be there. But he was just there. We walked into the room to do the dancing, and he was like there, his little suit. And he was like, hi, guys. We're like, uh, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> he just had us do, uh, it, it's like a little snippet from Dance at the Gym, not the original choreography, just like something that Justin was working on. And we had been doing it by ourselves. But that day, they brought in both guys and girls and they were like, we're going to do a little partnering section today. So they taught us, like, it was pretty much the same choreography. It was just some bits that were different with the partner. And they taught it to us there in that room. And then they're like, all right, cool. We're going to do like, like a little trio of, of couples. And so they had been doing that for most of the, of the dance, like auditions, whenever we would do them, they would put us in like a little trio, one person in the front, two people on the side. And so we were doing that with couples. And I actually talked about it with Talia, my, my partner in the movie, the last time I saw her. Um, at the audition, there was an, an odd number of girls and like an even number of guys or like vice versa. So one of us was going to get two partners and that someone was me. <laughs> so I got two dance partners, meaning my little trio had to go twice for me. <laughs> I was like... I'm sorry, guys, <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I had I had one girl. Her name was um, Julia, or I think, and I had her, first, and then Talia was after. So we went twice, one for each partner, and then that was just like that. That was it. You know, like you did the dance, and then I think that was like the main thing we did that day. I don't think every other audition after that had been getting more intense, like more acting, more singing. Like, we want to see you act while you're singing. We want to see you, like, you know, really get into the character while you're acting. It's not just, like, base level stuff. And then that last day, I think, was just, like, hardcore dance, which I'm not, I'm not, like, upset about. I was really happy about that. It was really fun. But, um, yeah, that last day was just, like, we want to see you partner. How well can you do it? Do you have, like, you know, the style, I guess? And so that was that whole last day and Steven was there and he had, his, he had his phone out the whole time, just like recording. Like sometimes you're in the middle of the dance, he would get up in your face, like not enough where he'd get hit, but like he would get as close as he could 
just to like see you. And one of the last things I think we did that day was somebody sat him in a rolly chair and we set up like the whole floor where there's like one lane down the middle while we're dancing on the sides. And somebody pushed him across the floor in his rolly chair and like spun it at the same time so that he could get like a nice little 360 cam of us dancing while moving through. He's just like, he's just got that kind of brain, I guess, where he can like, he wants to be able to see it. Like even in the audition, not even like in rehearsals or anything like that, like way, way, way before shooting even starts, he wants to get an idea for it, which I think is really cool. It, it was really nice to be able to see him in there. It was scary, but I think it, it was nice for all of us to be able to see that guy, you know, we come so far. So even if it's like a no at this stage, at least you got to see him, at least you got to have this experience which is what I was telling myself the whole time. I would have been bummed for my first open call. It's not too bad <laughs> to have made it that far, but um, I'll try and wrap it up. I think that's about it. Like after that last call, um, oh yeah, that these calls had taken like, I think a month or so at this point. In September, we had a lot. And then October, there wasn't much. November, it picked back up. So it, it was like a good month from that first open call to like, or like a month or two months to like the last one. And then I remember actually that that last open call or that last call was on a Friday because I had to go to secret pilot production rehearsal right after. <laughs> I know we're not supposed to talk about it, but that's how I remember it. I went to rehearsal for it right after that, uh, that um, callback which is really funny, but, um, yeah, that, that was like the 16th, like November 16th was that last call. And then like three days later, two or three days later, that Monday, um, the 19th, I got the call and they were like, we want him for baby John. And I was like, Oh my God. Okay. So we put it on speaker. My whole family heard, which was nice. And, um, but yeah, that, that was just like, I didn't, I don't think anybody expects to get that call. Like, I mean, it, it's been such a wild ride already, even like two months of just straight rehearsals and like being nervous and trying your best. And just like, I mean, you would hope so, but like, I don't know, just the idea of ever receiving a call like that is like so outlandish, but yeah, it was a lot. I cried a lot, <laughs> but, um, yeah, that, that was like one of the greatest days of my life. And yeah, here I am. We saw you like two hours later or something. Yeah. So how does it feel like not being able to tell anyone for so long? Oh, God. Start telling people? It's like not being able to go straight into rehearsals was one thing and not being able to tell anyone in that time, it was like, God, I got the call in November and we actually started rehearsal rehearsals in April. Months and months and months. And so, yeah, not being able to tell anyone. I, when I went to rehearsal that day, I, I still hadn't gotten the call, obviously. So I could still kind of like talk about it and that whole thing. But then like, as soon as I got the call, obviously they say, don't say anything to anyone. Like, like you can tell your family, of course, but like even certain friends be weary. And it's like, oh God, okay. I mean, which makes sense. Uh, I get it. But like, God, it was, it was so hard. Um, person, the one person that wasn't in like my immediate family that I told was Lana. So she knew while we were doing the secret pilot production it's because like her, um, her dad works for Disney and Disney was doing West side. So like he, he wanted, like, we wanted him to know, we wanted Amy to know that whole thing. But so she knew. She, was, she, she didn't know at first. It's just she went to Amy and her mom and was like, like did, did Patrick like get it? Or like, did something happen? I forget exactly what she said, but she was like being nosy and she knew something was up. And so her mom told her, which is really like her. I love Lana. She's cool. <laughs> but um, yeah, so she knew. Um, but other than that, like my immediate family knew. John, of course, knew. But when I called him, I was like, I got it. And he's like, my boy. It was nice, but um, yeah, not being able to tell anyone for that long and having needing to wait for the actual thing to start for that long, both together was like, oh God. And just like going to school still and just like 
I was a sophomore then. So just like going to school, acting normal, you know, doing all that, not saying anything to my friends because they knew that I was going because I wouldn't shut up about it. I was like, I'm going to these auditions. And then after that last call, just like nothing. I like, I, I cut off the talk like cold turkey. Oh, there wasn't a whole, there wasn't a whole lot of discussion about it. So whenever it did come up, it was like, well, yeah, whatever happened with that audition, did anything come of that? And I was like, I don't know. I'm still like waiting. Like we haven't had anything. I don't know what's going to happen. It's just all of that. Anything you can imagine. I said, but like, yeah, um, that was, that was a time. <laughs> I can't even fathom that must have I can't even imagine. That must have been so hard. I could not keep my mouth shut for that long, I swear. So now you mentioned you started rehearsals in April. So I guess what was the rehearsal process like? How does it contrast from like a stage production? And what was going through your head as you're in rehearsal for this like crazy Spielberg movie? Yeah. Um, well, we had rehearsals at the same place that we were uh, auditioning at in Gelsey. And um, what's actually funny is that, I mean, obviously I'm a theater nerd, so I get into musicals all the time. And after that last um, callback, I had so many months of just waiting that I in Newsies, like hardcore. And so when I was like getting into Newsies and like watching stuff on YouTube and just like watching it on Netflix, like the uh, stage production that I could find on there, like, I started recognizing faces like people from that I've been seeing in these auditions are in this. And I'm like, who are these people? So like, I had no idea who they were in the room. I just, I just saw them and was like, he's a really good dancer. It's like, so is he, like, they're all good dancers. Why am I saying he's a good dancer? I know they all are, but I just recognized their faces. I saw them in this and I'm like, Oh, they're like, they're like big time. I had no idea. So then I was learning their names. I'm like seeing Ben Cook in this. I'm seeing Jess Leprado. I'm seeing like John Michael. I did a scene with John Michael in the audition. I was face to face with him. I didn't know who he was. And now I do. And I don't even know him for real. I just see him in like newsies and stuff. Just like that. Like they're all huge Broadway. Like Mike Feist. Like I already knew Mike Feist from Dear Hansen. So I was, I was, I was fanboying in the audition for him. But everybody else, I had no idea who they were, and I'm learning who they are before even knowing them. So it's like it's crazy to go from like not knowing any of them during the open call. Come April, I go in there and I see it. I see them. And I'm like, I have to like introduce myself to them and like ask what their names are. Like I don't know. <laughs> so, um, yeah, the rehearsal process. Um, I woke up at 4 a.m. that first day. Rehearsal was at like 9. I had to stretch. I had to get ready. I had to, it was pitch black. <laughs> but um, yeah, that was, that was how I started that day. And I went in and I said hi to everybody. And um, it's just like, I don't know. It's just, um, we were in Galaxy and they, they would break us up into groups. I don't want to like disclose too much. I don't know how much I'm allowed to say, but I'll just go. <laughs> they would break us up into groups. So it's like, okay, the guys that are, that are in this, you're doing this. The rest of you are singing this song. And so they would split us up. And that was how the majority of rehearsals went. At least in the beginning, I think as it went on, there was, they would add more and more people and then they would put us all together more often for all these big group numbers. And Kelsey is like, we were in these tiny little rehearsal rooms and it was like a giant curtain that we were like, we would never go behind really. They opened that curtain up and we sat in that place for like the first rehearsal. It's just like giant theater. It's, it's like lots of seats, but then they have a stage that just goes back. It's not very wide, it just goes back. And I was like, wow, I've never seen anything like this. And then it has like walls that come out so it can be smaller if you need it, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, it just like goes all the way back. And I never understood why until we started like rehearsals and stuff, but I'll, we'll get to that. Um, we were all sitting in this theater and Steven came out and he was just like, welcome to West Side Story 2020, everything. And we we're like, yes, oh my God. So he, he um, had like, Tony Kushner was there, uh, Justin Peck was there, like all the, the big names were all there. So they could like, you know, talk, be there for this big rehearsal with all of us. 
And um, I think for the first the first couple of rehearsals, it was just the guys, shark guys and uh, jet guys. And so we were all there and he was talking to us about the movie and everything. And he read like a little poem that he thought like that he really loved, that he thought like, you know, made sense for the situation. It was just really sweet. It was really nice. Steven is like, like the greatest director of all time. And he's like a dad to all of us. It was like really, it felt really homey the entire time. It never felt like it was like a huge production. It was just like, he's really excited as much as we are. So it was like really reciprocated the entire time, which was great. Um, but yeah, that first rehearsal, we kind of just broke up into our groups, did our thing. And then as time went on, we would always get together on that giant stage that goes all the way back. And they gave us like rehearsal sneakers and they'd put us on this stage and they'd be like, we're going to do this opening number from the prologue. And I understood why it was so long, why they would take that wall out and have us just in this giant thing. They put us all the way in the back and have us walk towards them like we're on a street. So we had like a street inside. It was so big and it, it worked out really well because when we, we start in the very back, by the time we're done, we're like coming into the stands from all the like spinning and the jumping and the da, 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 you know jet stuff. But um, <laughs> yeah, that was what that was like. And then as time went on, like I said, it was just the guys at first, and they started bringing in the jet girls and uh, the shark girls, and everyone joined. Everybody was there by the end. Like rehearsals would start at, like nine a.m. and we'd all do like ballet and like vocal warm-ups in that giant space. And we had all these little side rooms, the ones that we had auditioned in and been held in and all this stuff. They'd bring us in there. They'd bring Tony and Maria into one room to do a thing. And they'd bring the shark guys and the shark girls into one room. Jet guys would go in another room. Whoever needed the giant theater would be in there. It was like, we were all off doing our own things. And then sometimes we would come together to do one big number, like dance at the gym. That was like a whole week of just everybody's in the theater all the time. And we're going to teach you what to do. And it was like, thank you. That's really fun. Yeah, that was a really fun week. <laughs> but um, yeah, that was that. Was that. And um, I, oh yeah, I had to do tutoring during all this as well. Because I was still 16. And they require like three hours a day of like tutoring time, which was like a nightmare. I loved, I loved all the tutors that I had, if they're watching this, I, but um, it's just like, you, you can't win in that situation as the tutor. It's like, I just want to be out there with like my friends. I want to go and dance. I want to go do my thing. But, you know, I had time to do my work, um, that whole thing for three hours a day until, until summer came when we were shooting, I was pretty much free. But during those rehearsals, I had to be in there. And, um, that was just like a little side note to the rest of it. Cause most of the time during those days, I'm out there with everyone. We're learning, we're doing our thing and it's a really, really good time. But um, yeah, that rehearsal process, it was six months all together. It was two months of rehearsals. So we were in that theater every single day for two months. And then after that, it was four whole months of shooting. And I thought that was normal. I've, I've learned now that shooting usually takes like a month or so for like other films and stuff. I had no idea. I thought that like six months was like the regular, but um, yeah, that was like getting to know all these guys. And I was super nervous the first day, obviously, cause I'm 16 and they're all in their like mid to late twenties or so. And like, they've all been in theater and they've all done this. Like if you're not in Muzi, you're, you were a Billy and Billy Elliot. And like, if you weren't in that, you're, you were in Hamilton or you currently are in Hamilton or you were in Hello, Dolly, like, <laughs> like any, any show you can think of, they, they have something to do with it. They were in it. They directed it. Like, it's just nuts. They're like business boys. They're like in, in the industry, they, they know what they're doing. And I haven't even come close to a Broadway show being in one. I haven't I barely auditioned for any. And I'm just like here. And so like, it was just nuts. I was like, am I going to be able to like live up to the standard? Like I know that I got in, but am I going to be able to like keep that up? Am I going to be able to like impress them and like 
want. Like, so that's, that was really nervous about that. And I was like, am I going to be able to keep up with them and their dancing? That whole thing. But um, as time went on and I got to know them better, it, it is just like a big brotherhood. We have a group chat and everything now. <laughs> like we still talk like regularly. So yeah, they're like, they're like brothers to me. And it's, it's like two years and I'm like a man now. But I, I learned so much in that short period of time, in those six months that it was like, I just grew up so much and going back to school was a challenge. I was like, I've been like with these 20 something year olds and like learning and like having a great time for six months. And now I, get, I go back to kids my age and it's like, uh, I don't know <laughs> that and schoolwork I was not ready for, but, um, at that rehearsal process, I just got super close to them and the, sh the shark guys, shark girls, everybody in the cast we were just like a big family. We still are. So, um, yeah, it was just like a really, really great time. That's amazing. Oh my God. I love just hearing about this kind of stuff. So that's so cool. I like talking about it. Thank you guys. Yeah. So going from rehearsing every day, like different groups, what was this transition like to filming it? Okay. That was, I'd say, I'd say pretty seamless. I think um, it was two years ago. I'm trying to remember exactly how we did that. I think, um, I don't know if it was like, I think we went straight into it. I don't think we took like a week off or anything. I think it was like, we, 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 our last day of rehearsal was our last day of rehearsal. I think like the next day or like a day or so after that, like we were just on set and it was like going straight from, okay, you're doing this, like rehearsing it and practicing it. It's like, okay, we're confident right now go do it. <laughs> so it's like, all of the music that you learned, all of the dancing that you learned, like you have it all in your brain now and just, you just go out and do it in these different contexts. Like you're doing that same song, but now you have to move and like do this thing with it. You're like walking across this like bumpy terrain and you have to sing the same song and know your part in it. And like, you have to dance this part, but now we're in like this different space. It's like kind of similar to the theater, but kind of not. You have other people to worry about like extras and things like that so in terms of like the time it took to transition like not at all but in terms of like the transition transition to like actually being there and doing the things that you were taught it was it was it was really fun but still kind of like oh wow um <clears throat> i don't think i'll get in trouble for saying the first thing we shot was like a part in, from the quintet when we're walking across train tracks it is like sort of nighttime and there's a train coming at us. There's a guy for, like, from production in a train and he's coming towards us and we have to walk in front of it. <laughs> he's far off, but it's still like freaky. But we're walking across the tracks and singing like the jets are gonna have their the tonight and we're running across. And that was the very first um, thing that we shot for the movie. So it's, it's not like in context or like in chronological order at all. It didn't start with the prologue, nothing like that. It was like, towards the end of the movie and we're starting with that so yeah it was just like singing that part while walking across train tracks and like trying not to trip on anything because like you're in this group and you're looking mean if you trip and it like throws you off <laughs> so, which happened a lot but yeah just like the first time I got to put on the costume was that day just like my little outfit and like everything I have a little band-aid on my ear you know from the prologue I'm not gonna say anything but um yeah, just like put dirt on you, put on the costume, put dirt on the costume, like everything. Like you're in it and you go out there and you do your thing. It's just like nuts. It was like the best feeling. Like been two months of just like dancing and dancing and learning everything. And now it's really the fun part. Like everybody was having a good time. Like Steven was coming out and talking to us just like about anything, not even about the movie, just like, like a dad, just whatever, whatever he wanted to talk about. A uh, little side note, he would just talk to us about like movies he has done and just like little things about it. Like he told us like the beginning, the, the beginning scene from Saving Private Ryan, they, all those like mortar hits and the sand exploding, that was demolition. They put stuff under the sand to like explode around the guys, but it took them like hours to set up the beach. So if they didn't get the shot when they need the shot, like first try, 
they had to wait till like the next day and the team had to work like overnight to set the bombs up again. I think luckily they got it like first try or second try, but even second try is like really scary. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but yeah, he would just tell us stuff like that from all of his movies and it was really nice whenever we weren't working. But um, that first day was kind of our introduction to that and our introduction to like shooting <clears throat> and everything. But um, yeah, uh, I got to meet Double that day. <laughs> his name is Justice and he's really cool. Um, during rehearsals, they actually talked to me about that. Like the stunt guy looked at me one day and he was like, you got taller. No, there's something different. You got taller. Like you're not, I, I was looking at one stunt guy and he was much shorter than you are now. I think I'm going to have to get a different stunt guy because you grew. Like it has to be the same. And I was like, I don't feel like I grew at all. And he's like, no, there's definitely some height there. So, <laughs> I mean, I, I was 16. I was still growing a lot. So he was like, I'm going to get a different stunt double. And so I got to meet that guy that day, Justice. And I got a picture with him and all that fun stuff. But yeah, um, I love Justice. I got to see him over the summer. Um, and I got to go skate with him in Vermont, that whole thing. That's where he lives. So, but I love Justice. He's a really cool guy. Um, uh, oh, yeah, I completely forgot to say, speaking of stunt, stunt doubles, they taught us like how to fight like stage fighting in rehearsals. I didn't even mention that. I was so fixated. The main thing was dance and singing and acting and everything. But because of the nature of the movie, they were like, okay, we're, this is how you throw a punch. And I was like, okay. <laughs> it was really fun. I mean, my character is getting beat up more so than beating up. So it's, it's fine. But they were like the basics. This is how you punch. And they, they taught us like some simple fight choreography. So as well as dancing, you have to make a fight look real. And so stuff like during the rumble, that stuff came in handy. They're like, okay, you're gonna do, you're gonna do this choreography now. Like, okay, we're gonna do the one where like I kick you and you fall and you jump on me. Like, okay, that one, cool. And they just say action and you do it. And you do that choreography and make it look real. They taught you how to like take a hit realistically and how to be safe when hitting someone else, stuff like that. But that was really fun. That was really, really fun. I actually got injured during that. Um the the guy, they have like giant stunt doubles like or like um action guys what, what are they called i don't know but they know how to fight realistically so they're massive Definitely they could kill me and they're letting me beat them up because they're professionals and i'm like thank you so much <laughs> so he's on the ground i'm supposed to kick him in the gut and he kind of like jumps up and falls over i kick him in the gut i keeled over like i pushed over too much when i did the kick so my face was right next to his head so when he like came up to do the thing, bumped me right in the jaw and like tooth went, it didn't go through my bottom lip, but it like went into it hard. So I was like, I was so much adrenaline. I, like he fell over and I was like, yeah, that was the last step. And I was like, but no, there's something wrong. <laughs> like, I was like, yeah, I did it. And he was like, okay, you good? I'm like, yeah, I'm good. No, no, I'm not. There's something wrong. <laughs> so that was, I think my only injury during anything but that was like our second week was when we were like doing that stunt stuff so uh really good start uh yeah and that healed over time like by the time we were shooting it was gone which is great but um that was a little side note i forgot to mention but yeah um where was i in shooting but uh yeah after that first day it was just like they have our little trailers that we go to every day and it's always a different location. So it's like in rehearsal, you're there every day, but during shooting, sometimes they have different things. So it's like, you might have like a week off or you might have like no days off for a week, or you might have like every once, like every other day. It's just like, so, cause everybody has different things to do. If the sharks are doing something one day, obviously I'm not there. I'm a jet. <laughs> if Tony and Maria are doing a scene somewhere, then you know that's that so i'm not there every day so it went from like every single day for two months to um it was really erratic so i got used to that eventually just whenever it's like okay you're coming in tomorrow for this and like the, the schedule was always changing obviously so things were always really tentative but um i mean it's not like i had anything else to do so it really wasn't a problem i'm like no wherever you need me you can call me five minutes before I'm supposed to be there. I'll get there. Like, it's fine. So, um, 
Yeah, just like over the summer, I didn't have to do school or anything. So I was just able to relax at home when I had time. And on set, I'm on set. Don't have to worry about it. It's great. So that was like the best summer of my life, obviously. <laughs> so yeah, just getting used to that kind of schedule of things. And um, every time we would go into rehearsal, I'd get picked up from my house and they would drive me to the set wherever it was. Like we, we shot in Jersey a couple of times. So those were like nice 20 minute car rides. Some, sometimes we're in the city. It takes me like an hour to get there from our house. But it was nice that they like did that for us. During rehearsal, they didn't do that for us. We got to the place on our own. Um, but during the actual shooting, it was like, if I needed to, I could wake up like 20 minutes before they get there, like get myself ready real quick and go out. So I got to sleep and it was nice, <laughs> but yeah, wherever they, they needed me, we would just go there. And usually it was like kind of erratic if it was just like a little small thing. But if you had like, if you're doing like cool or if you're doing crop key or if you're doing dance at the gym, it's, it's like every single day. You just go. And sometimes they would put me up in a hotel in the city close by so that I wouldn't have to go from Jersey all the time. They, they'd put like all of us in one hotel so we could just leave the hotel and go into the cars and go to the place. Like we don't have to wait for me to come in like an hour or two from, the, from New Jersey. <clears throat> so they would just do stuff like that whenever they needed us. And like, um, um, what else was I going to say? It's just like, um, yeah, every, it was like different times too. It was like, we would go in sometimes weeks at a time, sometimes in weird times every day. And for the most part, I mean, during rehearsal, it was like 9 a.m. you're there. But for these, it's like, I mean, Stephen can control everything under the sun except for the sun. So he has to wait like for, for things to, to, to move. So like, if he needs it to be nighttime, obviously you have to wait. So it's like 9 a.m. every day for rehearsal. Like, all right, perfect. I can like figure that out. And sometimes they'd be like, okay, we're going to have you come in tomorrow um, at like, we're, we're going to need you to get in the van at like 6 a.m. And I'm like, what? <laughs> oh, I have to like wake up, wake up. Okay, I got you. So they would start like early. Like if they needed it to be daytime, they would start like right at the crack of dawn. Like, because it takes them a little while for everybody to get there and get costumes and figure out the cameras and what they're going to do. So if they need like sun streaming in through the windows at morning time, you have to get there hours before that actually happens. So stuff like that, getting used to that. And um, for, for the, uh, the rumble, the rumble was a week, about, about a week. And that had to be at nighttime, which means... I slept until 6 p.m. every day and got up and went there. And around 8 or 9, when the sun was, like, gone for sure, we would start shooting all night. And it was wonderful. <laughs> it was such a good time. It, um, the one thing that I think anybody can say, my mom can say it. She was there on set with me every day. She had to be because I was a minor. Crafty is, like, a godsend. It's the best thing. They give you free food and you go to a van and you say, I want pancakes and bacon in the morning and they'll give it to you. It's like, it's the greatest thing ever. And going on two years since I've had it, I, I miss it with all my heart. <laughs> um, but yeah, like you would go in the morning and get crafty if you wanted it. And then especially during that rumble week, um, I ate a lot of food. I had a lot of airheads, so I was never tired ever. Um, I have a massive sugar tooth and I showed it off. And all these dance guys, like soup, they eat super healthy. They're like, oh my God, man, how can you do that? <laughs> Any sugar. And it makes me feel like I'm like, like my brain has like glass in it. Like I can't do it. And I'm like, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. At 16, I got that fast metabolism, it goes right through me. <laughs> But that was that was a side note. That's not important, really. But that was my experience, what I remember from it. And yeah, we were like in like a navy yard in like a giant warehouse, so you could sit by the water if you wanted, just like look at the lights of the city. And you go into this warehouse, just filled with salt, <laughs> and we would fight. 
next to the salt. And when you weren't fighting, you could like walk around the lot and just like talk to people, say hi, and you could walk around in the actual warehouse out, out of everybody's way. But yeah, just like that was a really good week. Just that was a, that was a lot of fun. That was a week. I called them all like rumble week, this dance at the gym week, because they they all took about that long. And usually if it's like a week like that, like I said, we're in a hotel. So we shot the rumble week uh, in that hotel. That was a different sleep schedule, though. And then dance at the gym, obviously, was during the day. So we get there really early in the morning. Krupp Key, I think, took a couple of days, like three days, four days or so. I don't think it took a whole week. But um, we did that super early in the morning, stuff like that. And yeah, that whole process, I hope I'm not leaving anything out. If we, if you ask me another question, I'll probably circle back to something I forgot, like I usually do. But um, yeah, four whole months, that two month rehearsal. And then, like I said, that whole context thing of just like, you're, you're there and you have to do what you know. So we would, we, as much as you do it in the theater, in the rehearsal room, things change. Like when you actually get on set, it's like, okay, we don't have as much space as we did this prop is going to have to move. You're going to have to move with it. How are we going to get you over there with the camera and make it work? When the camera's coming, it makes it completely different too. Like you have to be under here and like you have to be on top of him so that we can see both of your faces. And if that doesn't happen, we have to restart. And it's like fun, but crazy trying to figure all that out. But yeah, like sometimes on the spot, he would change things. Justin would. That guy, like I... I didn't interview during like shooting, but I called him a genius. He really is. He changes things like immediately. Steven and Justin, just like no matter what, they can adapt. So he's the choreographer. Steven says something isn't working. Justin goes, okay, I got you. He'd come out there and be like, all right, guys, forget everything you know about this section. We're changing it right now. You're going here. You're moving over there. I'm like, oh, God, okay. So a lot of things would change all the time. The fun of it. And like us trying to figure out how to make it work and like, okay, you have to do something to get over there. What do you think? It's like, oh, let me try this. It's like, all right, that works. I like that a lot. <laughs> and then you just do it. So stuff like that would happen all the time. And um, yeah, four months of that. And it was like the greatest time ever. I got to go to like plenty of different places in the city I'd never been to before. And I got to do it with these people that I've gotten to know, these guys that are like my best friends now. And it was just like, they're all like children at heart. Obviously, I was the actual child in the cast, but they were all like my age, like in here. So you got, there was a ping pong table during Krupp Key. We played ping pong every time we got a chance. It wasn't just me being like, we should play ping pong. Like they were there before I was. <laughs> like, they, they, they did, they, they had the same thoughts as me, like in any given moment. And, um, yeah, I just like learned so much from them over that time and from Steven and from everybody there watching them work was like incredible. And so, yeah, for four, four whole months, two whole months of learning all that, four months of doing it and sometimes re um, yeah. And then after that, we, we wrapped it in September, I think. So it had been like a year from, from the open call to the end of actual shooting it was like a whole year. Cause I think September 11th was that first open call and like September 24th or around that time we were finished. And, um, I didn't actually go to the 24th. I, I ended like most of the shark and jet guys, like the, the gangs were done before that. And, um, Tony and Maria and everybody were Rachel and Ansel. They all had stuff to do. And like, you know, main character stuff had to happen, but, um, yeah, like our last day for most of the jet was really bittersweet. It was sad. No more crafty, you know? So it was over. <laughs> but um, yeah, we said goodbye. It was really nice. Um, but then after that, it was like, you know, go back to school. Oh, yeah. By the, by, like, by the shooting took so long. School was back in session by the end of it. So I was back in actual in-person school. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'm not going to be here tomorrow. I have to go and shoot a scene. So I was in actual school, like in history one day and then on set the next day. <laughs> but um, on set, I would have to do that three hours of tutoring again, which was great. It was. Yeah, it was great. But um, yeah, it took so long. It went from like doing it to not and then doing it. <laughs> but um, 
Well, one of the last things we did was um, kind of in chronological order, weirdly enough. The first thing we did was not, and the last thing we did was like the end of us, the end of the Jets. Like the last time you see us was um, the scene at the end with Anita, the the um, the teasing scene, that scene. That was the last one we did, and yeah, we all we all like walk out, and it's like that's the last time you see us on screen, and that's that was it. And after we shot that, it was like over and we go home. So it, it really was a nice little send off. It wasn't like completely out of chronological order. It's like you're doing the prologue and now you go home. It was like you're doing the last scene that you're in in the movie. And then you're that was it. Like you're done with shooting. So, um, yeah, it was it was like a weird transition because like six whole months of this and now I'm going back home. And it was nice to like kind of chillax and, you know. But it was still kind of like it was partially oh my god i can't believe that happened and sometimes still i'm like i sit in bed and i think about it for like five minutes and i'm like that was that's real that actually happened it feels so long ago but like that was like it's it's crazy to me um but um yeah just going back to the normal schedule i was I'm in school so it wasn't that bad i had something to keep me occupied but it was like I didn't shut up about it for like a couple months after that to my friends because I couldn't say anything. And then I had to stop seeing them for a long time to go and do this thing for six months. Then I come back and we're in school again and I can see my friends again and I can talk to them about it now. So I didn't shut up for like two months, like four months, like however long it was after that. And everything was West Side. Just told them like, like whatever I was allowed to say, just like anything I could think of. So kind of like right now, I'm just saying anything I can think. But, um, yeah, just anything I could think of about the whole experience, I would just tell them. And it was great to finally be able to talk to people about it and that whole thing. But um, yeah, I was just six months done back in school, back with my friends, getting back into that and just like auditioning and doing pretty much what I'm doing now. And I'm still waiting for it to come out. <laughs> still waiting two years later. But yeah, that's pretty much the spiel. That was so surreal to hear about. <laughs> like, oh my God, that must have been the most insane and incredible experience. Mm. Wow. Just, I cannot say enough about that. That must be so, so cool. <laughs> you know, yeah. Obviously, you know, we're still waiting for this to come out at the end of the year. So excited. What are you most excited for us, us audience members, to get to see about this new adaptation? I think me and the guys have talked about it. Um, I think I'm, I'm really excited about the new generation being able to experience it. The original movies from the sixties, nobody wants to watch an old movie, especially like a musical movie musical. I don't know many kids my age that are as stoked to see something like that as I am. And whenever I try to watch the old one, like my friends are like kind of eh, into it, but like, yeah, just being able to like have, kids my age like 16 17 18 years old see this like thing that i love so much in like a new light with like fresh faces like in the 21st century and hopefully bring the message of it to them so that they can you know see it and hopefully they enjoy the you know theatrics as well because i thought those were really good too but yeah, that's what I'm most excited for is for just like kids my age to be able to like go around and be like, oh my God, did you see West Side Story? Like it was so good. And not just be like West Side Story. Like, I think I've heard of that, like, <laughs> you know? So that's what I'm most excited for, for people to see it that way. I love that. I'm excited for that too. I feel like this story is so, it's so good. And more people need to see this. I'm yeah. so happy for this. <laughs> So now you're about to head off to start school at Montclair State for your BFA in musical theater. So how are you kind of gearing up for that? And what are you looking forward to about starting your educational journey with theater? Yeah, yeah. Um, God, I'm looking forward to so much. It's like, I talked about that studio life that I had in Florida. And that was from when I was eight till I was 12. So that was basically four whole years, like a, a college timeline, like little thing right there. And in that time, I learned like everything I know about dance and that I had a routine. Like I have classes I do every single day. And sometimes it would change, obviously, over four years. 
but like I, I I go to school, I go to dance in the afternoon, and sometimes it was like every day, sometimes it wasn't like different classes, different everything. But like I haven't had a routine like that since then, you know. Like I can go into the city and take classes, and I can do all that stuff, but it's not like all at one place. Like his studio was like my one stop shop for everything. So I'm kind of hoping that Montclair is that place for me, you know. Like for four years, I'm going to be there <clears throat> doing everything I love to do. It's not really going to feel like school, hopefully, but it's just like, yeah, I, I'll have a routine, a schedule. I have classes I go to and it's stuff I actually like to do, not just like, you know, school stuff. So that's what I'm looking forward to the most is having that routine back and being able to, you know, I've already met people from my classes. I have like a little group that I know. So I already know they're really great people so being able to like share that experience with great people kind of like west side and you know learn grow have a routine know these people sorry my internet connection is unstable just let me know if i'm cutting out but um yeah that's what i'm looking forward to the most and i i don't think it's going to feel like school it's just going to be like musical theater so being able to learn more about it and do it every single day that way is going to be really fun. I'm pretty sure I just said the same at uh, different times, but yeah, that is what I'm looking forward to the most. Mm -hmm. Very fun four years and very mm -hmm. educational and good for your career. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess kind of just wrapping up, what would be one piece of advice you would give to your past self? Oh God. Um, trying to think, what would I say to him? I think... <laughs> be cool boy real cool <laughs> uh that's really bad i'm sorry <laughs> but seriously um i was so like worried about like the whole process i'm like are these guys gonna like me am i gonna be good enough that whole thing and that self-doubt comes with everything because we're human it's how it is especially in this industry or in the entertainment biz you know, but yeah, if I could, if I could go back, like I had that mindset in the audition, I'm like, I'm just going to have fun, try my best. And if nothing comes of it, it's okay. And then once you know, you have it, that's like a weight off my shoulders, but still you have it and you're going into it as a, all these super experienced people. So it's like, I know I have it. They saw something in me that they wanted. Are they going to keep seeing it? Is it going to fizzle out? Am I going to lose this? What's going to but like all those doubts and worries and everything, if I could go back, I would just tell myself to let it go. Everything did turn out well, okay in the end, better than okay in the end. It was like the greatest anything that's ever happened to me. So yeah, just from the get go, just let it all go. Be cool. Have a good time. You're all right. You're good. That. I love that. That's amazing. <laughs> And the perfect sentiment to end on, Patrick, this was so cool. Like, I loved hearing about this. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us and give us all these details. I'm obsessed and congratulations. <laughs> Cannot wait to see you in this movie. Thank you guys so much for having me. This was a great time. Yeah, this was amazing. And to connect with Patrick on Instagram, follow at Patrick Higgins to Patrick S. Higgins, excuse me, to keep up to date on his latest projects. Be sure to follow Theatrical Thoughts at Theatrical Thoughts Podcast on Instagram as well. Thank you so much for listening and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.